Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'm going to show you the techniques I use for doing photo retouching. Here's my before picture, and here's my after picture. Now, first off, when I take a look at a picture, I try to analyze it and see where the problems are and decide what techniques I want to use. There are a few different techniques I use, but I'll show you the ones that I normally rely on to do this kind of photo retouch work. The second thing is I try not to take it too far. I don't want this to be absolutely perfect. I think that there's a few little problems in there. It looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more, more believable. So I don't try to go too far. If you go too far with photo retouch, then the people begin looking like dolls as opposed to looking like people. You begin to lose some of that reality. So I try not to go too far on the photo retouch. You know, I take it far enough so it's a nice picture, but not too far. Okay, let's now take a look at how I did this over here and what I analyzed. First off, on this left picture, when I looked at this, I noticed that I have, of course, these big cracks. That's my main problem. There is coloration out on the frame. That's the easiest thing to fix. We'll fix that first. I'll do the frame and the background completely, and then I'll demonstrate on the kid's face and on one of the sleeves here, maybe a little bit over here, to show what I did. The second problem on this one is that this is a scan of a photograph, and it was a dirty photograph. And on the scan, if I can come in here closer so you can actually see this, it also was saved in a compressed file format. You can see it right here. So this is kind of blocking up into squares. That's real typical of something that has been compressed with the JPEG file format. So these kind of square shapes in here. Those are called JPEG artifacts. So we have a couple of problems over here. We have our, our dirty photograph, we have our cracks in here, and we have some JPEG artifacting as well. So a lot of little problems on this particular image to take care of. But we can do a pretty good job of improving this and getting it looking like it's a bit more believable, a bit more, you know, a bit of a newer image. Now some things I actually left in a little bit. Notice that I there's this crack right here. I s softened that up, but I left that in because I thought it added a nice little bit of detail to the dress. It looks like a fold in the dress, which I didn't have any problem with. So I may leave some things in. Down here you can see a little bit of this crack here is still showing in there. I left that in because I didn't want to take out too much detail out of the dress. I took out enough so it looks good, but not so much I began to lose other details by trying to get rid of that. So again, an example of how I don't try to make this too perfect. I take it far enough so it's a good picture, but not overly too far. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is taken care of. I'm going to just get that one out of the way. Now, when I'm working on something like this, I'll be making several different selections. You can see different layers that I have over here. I'll be making different selections on this, and then I'll save those selections. I'm not going to take the time here to make or force you to watch me make these selections, but on this image, I was using either the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool, depending upon where the image or the selection was. I then saved those selections as I made them. Go up here to the Select menu and Load Selection. And I did one here for the kids. That's that image right there, that selection. Reversing that gave me the background. That's that selection here. And I did the left sleeve and right sleeve in there separately and the dress separately and the collar separately. Everything else I made selections but I didn't bother saving those selections. So again, when it's useful to make a selection, I'll go ahead, I'll make that selection and then I'll use the save selection option in here to make sure that I don't lose that selection. Okay, let's start off at the very beginning. I'm going to hide all of this stuff. That's all hidden now. So I'll right back down to the basic file down below. The first thing I always do, especially when working on a picture like this, is I make a copy of the background. 
just take it drag it up to the new layer button and it gives you a copy of the background I then hide the background and only work from the copy that way if I mess up I can always go back to my original it's right there in the file it saves me a lot of time and of course I may also want to take things from this as I'm working on this if I feel I've gone too far up or I've messed something up I can then take a piece of the original and paste it back over my working file and then again go back to work on that so I always do this first I then make my selections on my copy and then copy those to new layers as I'm working those so I have one here a layer for the kids and I did a couple of layers here for the sleeves separately I've already done a few layers that I blended back into my working layer which is this one there's my working layer so I blended things back into that one as well so let's see how this is approached first thing most obvious of course is that white border problem you can see that on the original back here there it is that border area that's pretty easy so I always like getting rid of some easy stuff first so my first approach on this back to our background layer is to pull in some of these guidelines and I'll pull them right down to the picture you see there we go the other ones already had them in there kind of popped up so I pull guidelines in right next to my image like that and then I'll make a selection based upon those guidelines. So grab the rectangular marquee tool, make sure it's on new selection right there in the options panel. Starting upper left hand corner, drag down bottom right hand corner, makes a selection of the picture. I'll now inverse this selection. So select inverse. There we go. And again, this one's easy. Make a new layer. There's my new layer right there. This is going to be the frame. And then put my colors at their defaults. Reverse out so white is on my foreground color. Grab my paintbrush. Check the brush size. That's pretty good. There's a the brush size. You kind of see it right there. And then taking that white, I'm just going to paint in to this layer. You could fill if you want to, or you can paint if you want to. It's really up to you on how you approach this. Now this is actually in behind another layer and make sure my opacity is 100%. There we go. And then simply go around and make sure that you paint that in completely. Again, you can either fill or paint depending on how you're approaching this. I like to get into the painting mode at this point because I'll be doing a lot of painting kind of maneuvers in here on this one. So no reason not to be doing painting right now as well. And that gives me just the frame. And then deselect so easiest one is to clean that frame up the next thing I want to do is to fix the background in there so on the background I came in and I made a very careful selection of the background including this area right down in here so it's all that background plus that and there's a little bit over here on the right hand side you know, into the shadowing over here on the right hand side then down between the heads so I made a real careful selection and took it clear up and around the top up here. Now for that selection, I used the polygonal lasso tool right there. And I simply took my time and did a real careful selection around the edges. The reason I used this tool is because I wanted to make a perfectly careful selection. If I zoom in, you'll see that it's a bit soft on this edge. The kind of softness that's a bit difficult sometimes for the program to spot. If I'm using other tools and really soft and fuzzy here so by using this tool I have a bit more control over that selection it takes longer but it gives you a much more controlled selection so let me just bring that one up here select load selection and that was the kids first right there I just took it clear around the kids and it snapped to my guideline over here and across the bottom and up here and then I added that little bit in there I just remove that from the selection using the subtract option on the polygonal lasso tool so once I had that selection made I saved that selection I saved that as kids I then inverted this selection so go up here to select and inverse and if I zoom out you can see how the that's now 
give me the background area without the kids selected but it does have the white frame in there as well so I need to remove that white frame from that selection let me show you how I handled that I'll back up a little bit further here we go so I'll switch over to the rectangular marquee tool choose subtract down here and then came in here and just drew marquees and just let it snap up to that guideline and it removes that bit and that upper right hand corner and I'll pull it into the guideline there it removes that bit same thing for the top just drag it in like that you can see right there so I'm dragging it goes to the guideline and that removes that bit in the same thing on the right hand side over here just drag in and it removes that bit so that left me with just the background selected and then I went ahead and saved that background so that's select save selection and then I gave it a name of background so taking the time to do this first careful selection in here actually gave me two it gave me the kids and then it also gave me the background okay now that we're at the background let's go ahead and see how that background is fixed so the first thing I'll do is I'll take my my copy of my background up there hide that one copy of our background I made a new layer from the selection so my selection is the background you can see that that's what it is right there and let's go up here to layer new via copy it gives me a new layer of just that background area and I took my frame and pulled that above that layer so the frame is in front of that okay so so far so good now we can soften or clean up the background using one of my my favorite tools now there are different ways of fixing problems like this on a picture different tools that you can use now notice that we have some grain in here from the photo we have our cracks looks like a water drop right there cracks of course go over the images as well then there's some discoloration where those cracks are kind of darkening along the edges of the cracks where the film emulsion actually has darkened by contact with the air so a few tools there is the clone stamp tool you can see it right there I'm just going to bring the size up I'll use the right side bracket key to bring that up and if I do an alt click you see there's the clone stamp so I could come in here and just clone stamp that out that's one way another way are the healing tools the healing brush and the spot healing brush on these you can come over here and just click on spots and let it you know clean that up and these are very good tools but they sometimes don't work as you would expect them to and they take a long time so what I normally do is I'll first go through and I'll do a quick cleanup using the clone stamp tool I won't take a lot of time on this I have another trick coming up which actually will solve a lot of my problems but I'll, I'll take care of the biggest areas in here with this tool just kind of like this just come into a bit of fast clone stamping trying to keep things looking relatively okay this is getting a bit too dark down there so that's not going to work for me but I can get this stuff up in here now with the clone stamp tool I can go a little bit outside my edge I can clean that up later that's because of the frame over there I can you know clean that out with that frame so I'll go through and I'll do a little bit of this but not too much just take out the biggest problems in here and then I'll come back in and using a different technique I'll really clean up this background very quickly again I can't do much in here because there's so much problems in that spot so I can and there's no real room to work I could zoom in real tight and try a little careful stuff but I'm not gonna bother with that just get that little bit right there okay so just a fast cleanup on that and there's a little bit right here let's just get rid of that bit I'll grab my elliptical marquee tool bring that down here hit the delete key and just clean that out okay now let's deselect that bit I'll zoom out a little bit here so I did just a, just a rough cleanup I'll, you know that's saved for last let's now use my second tool for cleaning up things like these cracks and so forth and that is 
a filter up here. Filter, noise, and dust and scratches. And this is a great little tool. What it does is it blurs the image out. So here it is without, and here it is with. Notice I actually got rid of all the problems in there, just about cleaned them out. Not perfect, but it's very, very close. On this, you have two options. You have the radius, and this will fuzz things out. It blurs things out. I don't like going too far with the blur. I keep, like keeping the blur down just enough so that it gets rid of my problems. And I found on this particular picture, four works out pretty well. And then the threshold is how much detail is retained. The higher the threshold is, the more detail it's retained. They, they kind of kind of work backwards from each other. This is kind of, you can consider this the radius kind of a rough adjustment and the threshold a fine adjustment. Now in this picture, what I've been using is a radius of four and a threshold of three, which gets me real close. Now what this does is it still leaves me some film grain up in here, which I want to have left. I don't want to have all that film grain gone. So I don't want to be doing too much blurring on this. If you have too much, it begins looking fake again. So I leave a little bit of that in, keeping these levels very, very low. You can see how it really cleaned up a lot of that background. Choose OK. All right, now I take a, another example, another look rather, and I'll pick up or fix any little problems, like this one little streak right there I don't like. So a clone stamp tool, and I'll click out here, a couple little spots, and that's gone. A little bit of dark areas up in there. I'm going to try to grab some lighter stuff and just kind of come over those like that. And the stuff in here, it's a little, you know, a few little spots in there. This is where you have to really come in tight and then use a very small clone stamp tool. I'll use the left bracket and back out a little bit here. And then this real real small movements on my clone stamp tool. So click like that, just real small movements to clean up those little subtle irregularities in there. And it could take you a while to do this. So you know, again, this kind of cleanup in here and photo retouch can take a long time so you know be aware of that this is not a fast process okay that's good enough to show you how i approach that one how i approach that background but the real trick there is to first make the selection do a quick rough cleanup clone stamp tool of the worst things like that line we had right here and then use the dust and scratches to minimize everything else and that's the same approach I use for most things as well. Now on the shirt, let's do this shirt sleeve right here. We'll do the left side shirt sleeve on this image. Same thing, come back to my original down here. I'm going to be doing two things here. First, I'll select the kids out. So let's select, load selection, and bring back my kids selection. Choose OK. There we go. I'll make a new layer with just the kids. So layer, new, layer via copy. There's my kids. I'll put that above my background layer. And then all my work is now going to be done on this layer. So I actually never even touch my background layer. So we have our new kids layer. Now I'll make separate little selections for different areas that I want to work on. In this case, we'll do the right sleeve over here. Now I've already made that selection off screen here. So select load selection right sleeve and choose OK and there we go. Now I'll use the exact same technique here that I used on the background. I'll zoom in on this and using the clone stamp tool let's just come in and get rid of the worst problems. And there aren't that many here. I'm not going to go through and, and try to get all those little dots but I want to get rid of these kinds of things. Now these big, big breaks in here. I'm using a, a very small brush, as you can see, and I'm really in tight. The reason for the selection is that I don't go outside when I'm up against the edge, so it, it kind of protects that outer edge. And again, just getting rid of the worst of the worst. I'm doing kind of a basic cleanup. 
just like that. Okay, I think that pretty much now gets rid of the worst offending spots. Leaves most everything else in, that's okay. We're looking okay up in here, that's not really a problem. Maybe a little bit of greenness up here, I can kind of go over some of that green stuff and back that out. And we look okay down here, maybe that little bit right there. All right, now we'll go back again to our filter and dust and scratches. Now, once you've used a filter down here, you can redo that filter at the exact same settings. And it's going to be sitting at the very top, or even use the control keys here, the control plus F keyboard shortcuts to do that. I'll just use it with a menu. Dust and scratches, and there we go. It kind of cleans that up. Does a pretty good job. It maybe has taken it a little bit too far. It's hard to say on fabric exactly how far is too far. Let's just undo that one because we're beginning to lose some detail in there. It's, it's a very, very fine adjustment as you can see in here. So that is with four and three. Let me bring threshold up just a little bit. And bring it up to five. So it's bringing back in a little bit of the texture in there. It's some of that, you know, blocking, but it's also some of the film grain showing in there. But it brings back a bit of a more realistic look to that. So, you know, even though I used a slightly different setting for the background, I'm using a little bit different setting in here. Very small adjustments. I think four and five works out well on this one. So there's before and there's after. It's going a little bit soft, as you can see on some of those lines, but we'll take care of that in just a second. Look, it's not that critical in here, in this area. Okay, now we have that in here. Go over to our tools right there, Enhance Tools, bottom left corner. We have the Smudge Tool, the Blur Tool, and the Sharpen Tool. We take the Sharpen Tool, and we'll bring that size. Let's just see where our, our brush size is right now, 8 picks. I'll bring it up to 31 picks. That's pretty good. Soft brush. And I'm just going to come in here and paint over some of these lines just a little bit. And it's going to increase the contrast on those and bring back the you know, more realistic look to this. Just a little bit. Luckily here, if it gets a little bit fuzzy or get a little bit from this kind of dot effect, that's fine. That's not going to hurt the image at all. Actually, make it look more realistic. Okay, so just bring back a little bit of sharpness in there, and that's done all back out. So there's, let's just deselect that. So a nice looking sleeve. We've gotten rid of the break in there, but it still has enough detail left in it that looks realistic. I haven't blurred it out too much. So that's the whole key here: is that you want to do a bit of softening, but not too much, and keep things as realistic as possible. So I did that for all the sleeves and the dress area. This actually worked out very, very well with that technique. Let me just show you this real fast. Down, I'll do a little piece down here so you can see how well this works. Let's just grab the polygonal lasso to. I'm just going to do a real fast adjustment like this. This little spot on that. I'll show you how that filter works. So. And noise, there we go, dust and scratches. And there's before, and there it is after. And you can still see a lot of the nice detail in there. It still retains the grain, but it gets rid of everything else. So this is a phenomenally great filter if you use it carefully and use it in a restricted area like this to make this kind of adjustment. Choose OK, deselect, and then it's, you know, clone stamp tool to get rid of those little spots. So that's the approach I did for all of the fabric in this image, except for the collar. Now the collar was the most difficult part of the whole picture, believe it or not. On this one, I made a very careful selection of this collar and the buttons. And then very carefully, I clone stamped. I first fixed an area right here, and I fixed these large areas, and then carefully clone stamped from those areas along all of these lines. It took a long time to do it to get that in. You see if I have that up here as a separate layer. I don't have that up there, but I'll show you the, the selection on that. So select, load selection, 
and collar. So a real careful selection for that collar and then very careful adjustment. Now to do this one, I used a little bit different technique up here on this collar. I didn't use that dust scratches because it didn't work. It didn't look good. It didn't look realistic. So instead I blurred this out using over here the smudge tool. And again using a, a very small brush, I'll use the left bracket key. Just kind of went over this like that and blurred that out just a bit right in there. And it kind of gave me a soft area, but not too much. It, it didn't want to get rid of all of my detail, just a little bit. I then brightened that up going over here and using the dodge tool just came in and painted over that and that brightened it up a bit. Once I had that bright enough I then could use that color in there that brightness to clone stamp from this area over everything else. Let me just show you just a little bit of that. So there's a nice brighter white area and then clone stamp tool Again, using a very small clone stamp, I'll use the bracket key back out like that, hold the Alt key down, a little bit of that, and then just tapping in here, you know, tap, 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 tap. Just very carefully working around and not trying to be perfect, leaving a bit of, you know, a few little problems here and there so it has more of a natural look to it. Just very carefully clone stamping in that cleaned area into all these areas around the collar. So you can see you know, how that took me a long time to do that and get that just right. So that was my approach on the collar area. Same thing for the buttons down here. I just took my time and did a real nice clean job on that. Okay, let's take a look at a face now. And I'll show you the approach to a face. And we'll, we'll do the boy over here. Now this is a little bit more difficult, a little bit more work on this one. So it's the same approach though. What I did was I used that clone stamp tool and again the right side bracket key to bring that up a little bit and fix the worst spots just quickly like that and try to make it relatively even And this is what took the most amount of time in this whole project. It was doing you know, some of these little detail things. This in the collar. And same thing for the hair. Again, clone stamping in to remove the worst of the areas. Now, I use a different technique on the hair. We'll get to that in just a minute. But I went through and did a quick clone stamp like this to get rid of the worst of the worst. Luckily, hair is fairly easy to do if you have some nice direction showing on that. Okay, so I went through and I did my clone step. I'm not going to take the whole time here to do this perfectly on this video, but I'll show you the technique that I used. And it's really a matter of being very careful about this and trying to, and that, that's wrong, let me just back out of that, grab the wrong spot there. Real hard, sometimes you, know, you may be using too large of a brush, so just back down a bit and then grab very close to what you want to clone stamp out like that and just carefully work that in. So it's a alt click, tap, alt click and tap and carefully just getting rid of that area that's a problem okay so that's pretty good now the next thing I want to do is again use the other tool in there to soften this up now on faces what I'll do is I'll take my standard lasso tool and I'll do a real rough lasso right around an area like this, like right around the eye there and then over the eyebrow down partway on the nose and then over here down to this side and along the hairline like that. It's a little selection 
and then I'll apply that same dust and scratches. Let me just go back here to noise dust scratch. Put this back at what I had. I had it at four and five. That, that's working out very nicely in there. Okay, then deselect. So I'll do that just an area at a time. I won't do the whole thing. I'll do the, the top part of the nose right here. And then I'll do that. There we go. Now, if anything comes out, not quite a little bit of greenness in here, I'll go back to my clone stamp tool and then do a little a little fix on that if I can get a good match. So that's the approach in here. Now, when this is done, you're going to find some little edges on this where you've, you've done this. So I'll, I'll zoom in. You can kind of see an edge right in there where I did that one. So go back to your smudge tool and come back in and just kind of rock it back and forth right over that edge. Just click and rock back and forth and you can get rid of that little edge showing and just soften things up. And then once that's done, it'll give you a real nice clean selection still retaining a lot of that grain effect, which you want to keep because that makes it look like an actual photograph. Okay, so I used that technique in here. A section at a time, I did the left side here, I did the chin, I did the lips, I did this side, and over here. So that was a technique for the face. Now the ears are more difficult because they're very, very small. So on the ears, I just used just the smudge tool. And again, a little smaller on the brush using the left side bracket key. And just kind of use this tool to blend that in a little bit. Just, just painting very carefully, following along the contour of this. Now, luckily, people don't look at ears that carefully. So this can be a little bit softer than the rest of the picture and it's not going to be bothering anybody. So just like that, just a little bit to blur that out and kind of soften that up. And then once that's done, that's fine. So that was a technique for the ears. Do that on, on all of the ears in this image. Hold the space bar down, pull over here. Another problem is this eye. This is the one of those difficult spots in this picture. Now this one required coming way, way in like this and do some real careful clone stamping. So real small brush, again, left side bracket, real small, and then just little clone stamp touches like this, just being very, very careful and staying very close. And then using some of the same color in here to carefully clean out that little crack. So just being very, very careful on the selections and bring the outer stuff a bit. There we go. So that is the approach on the eye, just being very in, you know, very, very tight. So that's a clone stamp technique, but being in, you know, real tight, zoomed in. So there's the ear. The ear looks great. Again, that was using the smudge tool. The forehead was done using the dust and scratches filter, and we cleaned up that edge again with the smudge tool. Now the lips I used the smudge tool on again. Just zoom in real tight and use the smudge tool very carefully on that. And for the hair, I'll do the same thing. So let's take a look at this. Let's get rid of a little green spot right there. I'll bring in my clone stamp tool. Let's bring the size up a little bit, right side bracket, and that's alt click and paste and just clean up a few of those little spots in there like that and then now I'm going to get this these two cracks in there back to the smudge tool keep the smudge tool small on this one and then just follow along on the directions of the hair and just little short movements on this and what I'm doing here is I'm really just kind of smoothing out some of the roughness that we had in this, which is caused by the pixelation from the JPEG artifacts. Just a little bit. I don't want to have too much in here. Just enough to soften that up a bit and make it look more natural. Clean up the edges up here a touch. So just little short movements. And that will help clean out those JPEG artifacts. 
So really the same trick that I used on the ears, I'll use in this area here. And there we go. So that's how I took care of the hair. This little bit of blurring with the smudge tool following along the strokes of the hair and keep the tool very, very small. Okay, back out again. So there you go. That is the approach. Those are the tools that I use. Then it's merely a matter of taking your time and doing the whole picture a piece at a time. But the most important things, first off, always work on backup pieces. Always work with selections so that you're not going to be overwriting anything. You can always go back and redo it and make sure you save your selections when you make your selections. Again, on this one, it was easy. Select out the kids, save that selection, invert the selection. For the background, save that selection. Selection for the border, save that selection. On these little ones, I didn't worry about saving those because they're just kind of free-handed selections. But there it is. There is the process that I use for doing this kind of photo retouch. Then it's just a matter of taking your time and going through and doing the whole thing. Little areas like the hand down here. On the hand, I use the smudge tool and I use the sharpen tool to sharpen up the edges. Same thing on this hand. On this leg, I selected out that leg and I used the dust scratches filter on the leg. So depending upon where it is, I'll use one or the other of those techniques or a combination of those different techniques. And when all of that work is done, and again, it took me a while to do this one, when everything was done, there we go. Here it is, the image. This is the step right before the last step. This is just everything cleaned up. And on my final step, I just lightened the image up just a little bit there. And lightening up the image on that one, I simply used the Enhance Adjust Lighting and Shadow Highlights to bring up the shadows a little bit. There you go. So that is my technique, the techniques that I use for doing photo retouch. Let me just hide all of this stuff in here and I'll bring our background back up again. So there's my finish. There's the original again, and there is the cleaned up finish using those tools. Then just review again. The tools I used were the smudge tool right here. I didn't show it here, but I'll sometimes use the blur tool, but I will use the sharpen tool. So smudge and sharpen tools together works out very, very well. You keeping them very, very small. Of course, I used selections, made lots of selections. Use the clone stamp tool right there. And on the filter up here, noise, dust, and scratches. So those are the main tools that I use when I'm doing this kind of photo retouch. One last time, there's the original, and there's the finish. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 